Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to talk you through some tips and tricks that will hopefully help if you are planning to go on board a Disney cruise line this year. I was super lucky and I got to go on the very first cruise worldwide. I was on the test cruise for the Disney Magic Staycation UK Cruises, Magic at Sea. I never know which order to put that in. <laughs> It was the Disney Magic at Sea staycation cruises for the UK. I think that's the order that it goes in. And I had so much fun. So if you want to check out the vlogs, they'll be linked down below. I think they're probably the best thing to watch if you just want to get a feel for what it's going to be like on the cruise itself. But this video is dedicated more so to giving you some planning tips, some packing tips, and then some tips for when you are on board. But also I've got a few little bits to share with you in a little Disney cruise haul. Now I was actually quite restraint. I was quite restrained. <laughs> Honestly, I've taken my Invisalign out, right? Because I've got a nice big cup of coffee here. But I feel like sometimes when I take them out, I now struggle to speak like I did when I first put them in. I don't know if that makes any sense. If anyone has Invisalign, let me know if you're having the same problems. <laughs> but yeah, I feel like now when I take my Invisalign out, I struggle to speak and get and pronounce, pronounce <laughs> words. <laughs> Okay, shake it off. Where was I? Where was I? Oh yeah, I was quite restrained when it came to my shopping on the cruise. That's what I was trying to get out. And I only bought a few bits, but like I say, I'll show you those at the end. So let's jump straight into the tips. So we'll start with planning for the trip. Now, the first thing you'll end up doing is going online, linking your reservation, and then when it comes time, when your window opens up, booking things on board. Now, the way it worked for our cruise was that you could book activities on board in line with your castaway club membership so you got preference basically if you were if you had castaway club membership and you were at the various tiers now i was a silver member so i think it was 75 days before i could book activities on board but then it's 60 days before is when i could actually book my port arrival time which is different to how it used to be uh when i cruised before it was the Castaway Club membership gave you the priority for both your onboard booking activities and for port arrival. Now that might change, but it seems like that's the way it was for all of the Disney Magic at Sea cruises. Be interesting to see what they do with the US cruises as I know they're about to kick off soon, but that's certainly how they did it for the UK. So booking your online activities worked pretty much exactly how I remember it before. The only difference being that there were a couple of extra things in there that you wouldn't normally book. So things like the show. So before you would just go to the show that was on when you weren't at dinner. But uh, for these cruises, they gave you the option to book the show. And obviously that's highly recommended because they did sell out. So why you could go on and book all your paid for activities like your mixology or your champagne tasting, they were the two that I did. Uh, you could also book this show. Now they showed the same show both nights of my two night cruise and they had it on at both times as you would normally have it. So during each of the dinner seatings, you could go to the show when you weren't at dinner. Uh, so we were able to book that, that was fine. There was availability and everything. I did see in some forums that at some later stages, some people were not able to get availability for those shows. And then I actually read that they put on some extra shows on some of the other cruises. So that's really good to hear. Highly recommend making sure you book your show. If you're not used to doing that, that's something that you should do. And then, you know, the paid for activities filled up quick like they always do. Mixology is always a very popular one. That one filled up super quick. And uh, the champagne tasting. Uh, I think quite a lot of the tastings on the cruise that I was due to go on in Liverpool filled up quite quick as well. But they're, you know, a good shout if you're looking to get alcohol at a good price. <laughs> if you actually look at the amount of alcohol that you get for the price that you pay, it's pretty decent. Uh, but do bear in mind that obviously a lot of these activities uh, are now, you know, structured quite differently because of the health and safety restrictions that are in place. So for example, for mixology, we didn't mix our drinks, they were pre-made. But again, keep an eye out on what's happening with changes in the restrictions because like I say, the UK has now lifted a lot of restrictions. So maybe the next lot of cruises that go out won't have those restrictions, which would be great. And then obviously the US 
will have different restrictions. So yeah, it's like, it's kind of, it's still a bit unknown, isn't it? It's all in the air. So then as part of the online check-in, there were two things that were different to I remember. So I had to upload a copy of my passport, just a photograph of it, and also a headshot, kind of like a passport photo. Uh, so I did both of those, and I would just recommend having those photos ready to go. It'll just make your check-in go quicker, especially if you're looking to grab one of those early port arrival times. So have those photos ready to go. Make sure they're good quality. It did reject my first image because I hadn't like got enough shoulders in. So <laughs> make sure you get like probably like down to here and you've got a good bit of white space above your head, pretty much just like a passport photo. So yeah, I would have that ready if you are trying to rush through your check in to get that port arrival time. You did have to fill in all the details before you could pick your port arrival time, including adding your credit card, etc. If you do want to try and skip through really quick, you can select maybe the cash option and then you can go back and add a card later. And uh, yeah, once you get your port arrival time, that's you all sorted, you'll be all checked in, and then you can print your port arrival form. Now, it did say on the website to print it, but then I don't think that was necessary it seemed like a lot of people hadn't printed theirs but i would actually recommend doing it because you're better being safe than sorry having it in your hand and also it was really handy for me when i was going on board just having it in paper form and being able to show it to scan it because they scan it a lot they ask for your reservation a lot because you're going through all these different phases before you get on board so it's just handy to have it i would recommend printing it if you can but i don't think it's the end of the world if you can't because they were definitely scanning people's phones as well now when you have your port arrival time and you're i guess preparing for when you're going to arrive on that day they do say you can only arrive up to 30 minutes before that time if you arrive earlier you will get turned away and I was reading about some havoc up in Liverpool where people were showing up in their cars and they were too early and it was causing traffic jams and everything so just don't show up early like show up when you're supposed to show up because you're going to just cause hassle for everybody else and you're going to make you know a queue longer that doesn't need to be longer and you're going to waste people's time so just come when you're supposed to come everybody's going to get on board you know they've obviously set their resources in a way to manage the number of people that they've got coming at the different slots. So, you know, it's hard enough as it is for everybody to get through this process with all the extra things we have to do. So just make it easy for yourself and don't show up at the wrong time. <laughs> Obviously, if for some reason you're running late, you can show up after your port arrival time and that's fine. Just don't show up earlier. Another thing you have to do before you show up on the day of your trip is get your confirmation of your vaccination. Now, this is specific to the UK, but I uploaded the physical copy of my NHS card. You know, the card you actually get, they actually ride on when you go for your vaccine. I took a picture of that that's what I uploaded and that's actually what they gave as the example when they were asking for it. Now I know there are also profiles that you can use if you can log into your NHS app or you know wherever I think they have something different in Wales maybe something different again in Scotland but in England anyway it was you at the time when I was doing mine you could just log into the app and use that but yeah for me I just did the physical card because that's what they showed in the example and that worked fine I would say when you're setting up that profile so when you go through to the link and you know your upload and everything make sure you remember your email and password for that profile it's not the same as your Disney profile you're setting up a new profile with this company and also that email address that you give is going to be the email address that you get your confirmation to on the day when you take your test your lateral flow test before you go on board so you want to make sure whatever email that is you've got access to it you've got access to log back into that profile because you will need to show that profile as well on the day so yeah just be really careful setting up that account that you do it right or you don't you know forget your login and stuff because that will just cause you delays on the day once you've got that confirmation i would take a screenshot you can even print it as well like your port arrival form i would also take a screenshot of your port arrival QR code as well within your uh on your mobile phone too so you just have everything ready to go just in case you lose internet like we did or you know you just have some other issues logging in or whatever like sometimes these websites go down and you've got issues especially when loads of people are using them so I would just keep everything offline either like on a screenshot on your phone or just a paper copy it's just it will make your life easier it's the last thing you want to happen on the day another thing to do before you go is make sure you've downloaded the navigator app on your phone i would do that in advance as well log in link your reservation make sure that's all good to go because they actually asked us to show that before they let us go on the cruise ship and that's because that navigator app 
is absolutely critical when you're on board. You use it for everything, for your menus in the restaurants, for paying for tips, for paying as well if you're buying extra things. All of it goes through that app. So highly recommend having the app already installed, already link your reservation. So in case you have any issues doing either of those things, you can get that resolved before the day itself. Then the morning of your cruise, you will get a health questionnaire emailed to you. A lot of people seem to get it around 5 a.m. So do look out for that. Check your junk and your spam folder if you've not got it because it is important to do that health questionnaire. It will again hold you up at the port if you don't have that done. If for some reason you get a link to the health questionnaire but somebody else in your party doesn't, you can share the link just when you follow the link log into your own profile because I actually did that with my friend that worked fine so once you follow once you have the link you can follow that link and then just make sure you log into the right profile and I think I'm not sure if it was one health questionnaire per person or per cabin but what I would just do is just log into if you have more than one profile log into any other profiles that you have on the reservation and see if that health questionnaire is still available. Now, when you're on board the ship, you'll actually get the health questionnaire again uh, the next day, I think. And I, I can't remember how this came about, but somebody actually asked us at one point in time on the cruise, oh, have you done your health questionnaire? I don't know whether it was that, I actually think it was our servers at the restaurant. They were like, hey, have you done that health questionnaire? So I think one of us maybe flagged up as having not completed it. So they do check on it and make sure that you are completing it while you're on board as well. Cause it just, obviously they wanna keep verifying that you've not got symptoms or anything like that. So moving on to some packing tips. I actually found packing quite hard for this trip. I just didn't know what to pack, you know, because we had forecasted rain and uh, it had been a terrible week of weather in England. But then I was thinking on board, you know, there's gonna be a pool, so I need to bring swimming stuff, but then I'm gonna be freezing. So I need to bring layers for if I get out of the pool. And then, you know, you go for dinner and you're in the ship and is there air con, am I gonna be cold? So yeah, it was just, you know, I just didn't know what to pack. And then I obviously wanted nice things to wear to dinner and also to pile out brunch and stuff. So I've got a few little tips that will hopefully help you out. From a clothing perspective though, I just recommend layers because you don't know what the weather's gonna be like outside. Obviously, if you're going on one of the US cruises and you're going to like Castaway Key, you'd be hoping you get some nice sunny weather. And obviously you wanna pack for going to the beach, etc. But you just never know. And specifically for the UK cruises, who knows, right? British summer, it could be anything. So I just recommend layers. Layers came in so handy, even for actually inside the ship, you know, you might wear a nice dress to dinner, but then the aircon might get a bit much. You know what it's like when you go in and there's a lot of aircon, you might just want a little jumper to throw over it. So definitely recommend layers. I just stuck with comfy clothes during the day. So leggings and, you know, I think I might've worn this spirit jersey and yeah, just comfy clothes. But then for Paolo, obviously I brought something a bit nicer. So do make sure you also check the dress code if you are going to Paolo or if you're on, you know, the Disney dream, you're going to Remy, make sure you know what the dress code is and have appropriate clothing for that. For dinner on the UK cruises, there was quite a mix in terms of how everybody dressed up or down. Some people were going in like spirit jerseys and leggings. Some people were going, you know, in dresses and, you know, sandals and stuff. So it was such a mix. And uh, yeah, so I, I think it's just whatever you feel like. I like to have the options packed so then I could decide what I was feeling on the day. Um, so I obviously ended up overpacking. <laughs> But that's not a bad thing, you know, like we're just making a vacation out of these cruises because I mean, for us anyway, in the UK, we've not really got many other options for vacations right now. So, so what if you bring a big case, you know, they take your luggage off you anyway. It's not like you're dragging it around. So I don't know if you feel like overpacking and that makes you feel more comfortable that you'll have the right options on board, just do it. <laughs> so then in terms of what I would recommend packing in your bag to actually go on board with. So not the one that you'll check in and pass through to your cabin. In terms of, I had like a backpack and then I also had a little side bag. I would recommend bringing a little side bag if just to have on board because you know, you'll be carrying around your room key, your phone, maybe your portable charger and stuff. So it's handy just to have something that you can like put that stuff in instead of, you know, using pockets or if you're wearing stuff without pockets, you've nowhere to put those things. So definitely recommend a little side bag. But yeah, for going on board, what I had was my identification. Uh, I had my printouts of my port arrival form, which is really handy. I probably should have printed out my 
vaccine confirmation too, like I said. I would also recommend you bring some water or some other drinks and maybe some snacks as well because the whole process is obviously longer than normal because of the extra things that we have to do along the way, like taking your test, waiting for your results, etc. So I even was watching some of the Liverpool vlogs and it is still, uh, you know, it is gonna take you some time from your port arrival to actually getting on board. So I would recommend, yeah, bring some water or some drinks, like bring some snacks because you might just get a little peckish. But yeah, I guess like normally it's not an issue because you're kind of, you're not there for very long and then you're going on board and having your food. But I would just say, yeah, obviously this process is longer. So just, you know, think about bringing water and some snacks or something. Definitely bring a portable phone charger, my biggest tip, and have that again in your carry-on because you'll be using your phone so much. Obviously you might be wanting to take like pictures and videos and stuff as well, but then you'll be using it for all of your confirmations, for showing that you have the Navigator app. So you definitely don't want that phone dying. I would bring a portable charger for sure. And I would get one of the good ones, you know, that can charge your phone a couple of times. I just find those ones so much better. Sometimes those smaller ones, just, you know, they only give you 20% or whatever and then they die and you might, your phone might die then as well. So yeah, I would say bring one of the more hefty uh, portable phone chargers because that will also be handy then when you go on board because like I say, you use your phone for everything. This mug is honestly one of my favorite purchases. I got it on my last trip to Orlando and I'm so glad because I've used it almost every day <laughs> over the last year and a half. I've actually got the uh, Joffrey's California Grill coffee in here and it's so good. I already mentioned bringing some water with you for the day you go on board, but I'd also recommend bringing some bottled water on board. Now, I did put my bottled water into my check-in bag and we asked when we were given the bags if water was okay and they said that was fine. I think actually on the Disney website, it tells you not to do that and to carry your liquids on board, which might be a bit difficult if you've got you know quite a few bottles of water. Definitely recommend bringing bottled water so you can carry that around with you. And even just a bottle, you know, like a reusable bottle so that if you do go and get a refill of drinks, now they probably can't take your refillable bottle and then fill that up because you know, then you're obviously passing it between hands and stuff. But what they can do is like give you, I don't know, three or four of the small cups they use for Coke or, you know, 7-Up or water or whatever, or coffee, and then you can just chuck them all into your uh, portable thing because they're, on the Magic in particular, when we were on Top Deck, there was only one place to get drinks and there was a queue and stuff. So you kind of don't want to be going back, you know, for your little cups. And then like we ended up getting like two or three and you're like carrying these little cups around. So I would definitely say if you have a proper reusable bottle, that would be super handy. And then just having normal bottles of water to stick in your fridge in the room would be handy as well, just so you always have water to hand. I felt like I didn't drink enough water on the cruise because we were just kind of do busy doing things. And like I say, there was only one place on that top deck to get drinks. So you just ended up not getting drinks, which is not ideal. And I typically drink loads of water. I've got my big water here beside me. It's the, uh, <laughs> there it is, the backside of water, water bottle. But yeah, I normally drink loads of water at home, so I feel like I didn't drink enough and I felt quite dehydrated. Finally then, some onboard tips. I would definitely recommend, as soon as you're on board, make sure you get onto that Navigator app so that you're on the onboard version of it. So although you can log into it and link your profile and stuff off, shore as they call it, I think they call it offshore, before you get on the ship. Uh, when you go on the ship and then join the Wi-Fi, that's when you move to the onshore version and that's when you can see all of the exciting activities that you have in the navigator. So the first thing I would do is go through that, favorite all the things that you wanna do and plan out your you know, first few days, at least plan out the day that you arrive on the ship because you don't wanna end up missing things, you know? So yeah, definitely go through the navigator, use that heart function, and then you'll get little notifications when those things are coming up. Also go into the messenger section and add anybody that you want to be able to message through the Wi-Fi while you're on board. If you go into that chat section, you'll have a little code that's your personal identification code, and then you share that with other people in your party and then you're able to like add each other and chat kind of through like an instant messenger. So it's really handy. As you're going through that Navigator app, definitely keep an eye out for things like open house. So that's when they open up the kids areas or the teen areas for anybody to go up and they don't happen very often. So I would definitely, you know, check out when they are and again, heart them. And again, because of capacity, on the cruises for keeping people safe. Those things will fill up quite quick. So I would recommend going at the start of that open house session if you do wanna get into those areas. We tried to go to Edge and it was full, but we were able to go up to Vibe. Uh, we didn't go to the kids club areas, but we had a little look in and they looked pretty cool. <laughs> 
Another thing to check on your navigator is the store opening hours. So the onboard stores, I think they opened around five o'clock, which is kind of what I remember as well from when I did my cruise in America. And yeah, you want to get there if you got your eye on some very specific things. I know for me, when I was on the US cruise, it was spirit jerseys at the time. Spirit jerseys were kind of new. Everyone was mad for them. So myself and Rachel were like outside the door at five o'clock to get our cruise jerseys. But they did actually bring more on over the next couple of days. So it was like as if they had some sort of stored away and they brought out more sizes because we actually went back and changed our sizes because we kind of went for whatever we could get on the first day. So yeah, I recommend going for opening if you've got you know your eye on something in particular. I thought the merch selection on board was amazing. I thought it was really, really good. They've definitely got some really cool new cruise line lines, <laughs> uh, including some nice Dooney and Burke patterns. I actually don't know if the Dooney and Burke pattern is new or not, but I, I thought it was really nice. And they had some really nice lounge fly bags and stuff like that. So yeah, they had a really cool just whole section of like Captain Mickey and mini stuff, all different bits and bobs. So yeah, loads and loads to choose from. So if you're looking to get your hands on merchandise, you're gonna be really happy. Another recommendation in the navigator is to go to the Match Your Mate show if you're a party of adults or if you can have some adult only time. That is my favorite show on board. It's so, so funny. Definitely recommend it above any of the other bits and bobs of entertainment. I just think it's gas, like it's hilarious when they get people up to do it. So highly recommend that, check that out. And then also look out for the drink of the day. So there'll be a cocktail of the day that's at a reduced price. And there'll also be happy hours in the different bars as well. So loads of things again to go through and favor it. The drink of the day, I think you can get anywhere really. I'm sure we were having it at dinner and stuff on my last cruise in the US as well. I didn't actually throw it out this time because we had, uh, the mixology on one day and the champagne taste on the other. So we just didn't need any more alcohol. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I definitely remember ordering it at dinner service as well while I was on the Disney Dream. I said this already in my vlog series, but make the most of room service. It's so good. The menu is amazing. You can get your Mickey bars delivered to the room at night. You can get breakfast in the morning. There's just so much choice and it's, it's just such a nice perk. I'm so glad they don't charge extra for it. Obviously, you know, you tip as you would do like for the service that you receive. But you know, just having room service available at no extra charge, I think is great. As well as that though, there's plenty of food options outside of your main restaurants and cabanas. So do check out, you know, the poolside bars. They have some really interesting choices. So there was a Donald Duck place that was right beside the pool that had some really interesting things. And then there was a Daisy, Daisy Duck, bar I don't remember the names of them sorry but there was a daisy duck place as well and they just they all had completely different things and then there was a pizza Pinocchio's pizzeria as well so yeah definitely check all them out and then don't forget that the main restaurants do lunch as well they do sit down lunch service so if for example you're not going to get to go to Lumiere's you can decide to go to Lumiere's for lunch and yeah then it means you get to experience the restaurant and oftentimes you know some of the best parts of the menu will be on the lunch menu as well especially the desserts. <laughs> and finally, if you're looking for characters, there will be some on the Navigator app. They'll say that there are sort of wave times and then that's where you can kind of go and try and take some selfies. But also at the end of the shows, they were bringing characters out as well because it was a nice way for them to bring some characters out but while there was a limited number of people around. So hopefully they keep that up. I thought that was a good idea. But I've definitely seen in the later cruises like in Liverpool and stuff that there are far more characters around. So it seems like they've definitely upped the ante in terms of having characters available, which is great because being able to get selfies and stuff with characters when, you know, you've not been to a park in so long is just such a really nice touch and definitely something that I think a lot of the people that have been missing Disney will be really enjoyed and it kind of gives you your little Disney fix. And even though, you know, you weren't going up and getting your usual photo and you were just taking a selfie, you were still having character interaction, which I kind of wasn't expecting. So that was really nice. Like the characters were still talking, you know, if it was a face character, they were talking to you. Um, and if it wasn't, you know, they were still interacting with you and stuff. So I thought that was really sweet too. So yeah, I think that's it for tips and tricks, but leave me a comment in the comment section below if you you have any more questions or if you want to go to Instagram you can DM me there over on Instagram I've actually got videos uploaded that are on my feed 
of the navigator app for every day of my cruise and that'll hopefully give you an indication of the kind of things they have on and yeah i also got some stories on there as well with loads of pictures from the trip too and like i say the vlogs are linked down below so plenty of stuff for you to take a look at if you're looking to get excited for your cruise or just find out some more information so finally i will show you the few bits that i got on board so i told my sister that i didn't get her anything on board even though i said i would but that was just me being a bold older sister <laughs> i did get two key rings so um yeah i will let her have one of these cruise line key rings i thought they were both super cute so yeah i decided to get both so this first one has the fab five and then it's got this little spinny thing here by the way so delighted with the sony zv1 any of you that vlog out there will know how painful the canon g7x mark ii which is what i had before is for focusing but look at this Ta -da. Ta -da. it's like magic okay so i think the spinner was ten dollars so the spinny one was 9.99 and then this dangly one was 14.99 and you can see it's got like the wheel and then it's got a little heart and then it's got a little anchor so the next thing that I got is actually from one of the restaurants. Now I bought it in the shop, but you also use it in one of the restaurants and it is the Animator's Palette Butter Knife. This was only $9.95, which I thought was a bit of a bargain. I thought it was going to be more expensive than that. And yeah, I just think it's so pretty and it's just, it's like a subtle Disney reminder. Do you know, that way I love things that if other people were just to pick this up, they'd be like, oh, it's cool butter knife but for me I'm like yeah but it reminds me of being on my Disney cruise so I love little subtle things like that that I can just have around the house that when I use them remind me of some really nice vacations and this will definitely remind me of my time on the Disney magic so I did also buy the one thing I said I wouldn't buy which is another Disney mug honestly I have a full cupboard well a full like shelf in a cupboard uh, of like double stacked mugs and I'm one person it's just outrageous I know but I just can't help it I love the mugs so much and they bring me joy in the mornings when I drink my coffee so anyway yeah I bought this one I was looking at another one that was kind of more plain you know just the kind of Disney cruise line style but it was just really big and I find I can't get through my hot drinks in those mugs they just go stone cold every time so yeah I went for this one uh, I really liked that I had all of the characters on there it's just missing Daisy honestly I love the fab five but Daisy needs more merch I love her so much and I just think she needs to be in there like you know we can squeeze daisy in there's plenty of space um but yeah so here we go it has uh mickey here then goofy then you've got the cruise line i don't know what you call these things i kept talking about it was it i don't know what you call it chimney <laughs> then there's donald and then pluto and then Minnie, and then it says disney cruise line here on the side and then it's got one of the life rafts has the handle but then, bonus, it's also got Chip and Dale on little floaty things. <laughs> little like, yeah, it's like the little circular tubes just riding the wave back there. And yeah, I just think this is really cool. So I'm excited to have my first cup of coffee in this one. So guys, that is going to do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. As I said, let me know in the comments down below if you have any questions, but also just leave me a comment. Let me know if you're planning any Disney cruises, if you enjoy the vlogs, if you would really like to go on a Disney cruise in the future. I know for me, Disney Cruise Line has stolen my heart. So I've already got another one planned. I'm planning to go in May on the Disney Dream again, but for a three night bohemian cruise I'm so jealous of you guys in the US that we're due to go on the August cruises that are now getting a double dip in Castaway Key instead of a stopover at Nassau that is just the dream the dream on the dream I'm so jealous so yeah hope you guys all have an amazing cruise if you are traveling with Disney Cruise Line this year and again yeah thank you so much for watching and I'll see you real soon bye